This is Late Night at North Texas. With your host, Peter Rabel. And your co-host, Cadence Bauzon. Featuring Stefan Talley. Naomi Carrasco. And Caden Smith. And now your host, the toast of Wiley, Texas, Peter Rabel. A little better, we'll, we'll work on it. Hello and welcome to Late Night at North Texas. Now, we've got a great show lined up tonight, but we just wanted to clear the air because some of you were wondering how we're performing on account of the writers and actors strikes. Well, the truth is we aren't getting paid to be here. No, quite the opposite. In fact, I actually have to pay to be here. You mean like tuition because we're a college show? No, I, I mean like Caden shakes me down backstage before every show. Right. Well, before he comes back for pocket change, um, let's jump right into this week's biggest stories. Yes, I, we should. I think I hear him coming. A, a, a couple was arrested after they ran their excavator through a portion of the Great Wall of China, creating a large gap with irreversible damage. The story made headlines for the pair's complete ignorance, which makes you think, why didn't the Mongols just buy an excavator? <laughs> Full line, front defense, excavators. Every army. Yeah. You think that they would just like ram into walls and stuff? Yeah. That could work. Get out of my way. I would, I'd still want to see it with forklifts, I think. I just think it would be a good idea. You know, a new study revealed a lunar lander left behind by Apollo as the cause of tremors on Earth's natural satellite. I mean, if I were a Greek god who'd gone out of style, I'd probably be causing trouble too. Would you apologize for it though? Eventually. Eventually. But not. I mean, I have to get out of my Gotta system. keep them waiting for a little exactly, bit. Exactly, yeah. That's how you do the best apology, is you choose not to apologize for a while. Or you get a ukulele and just start singing. Colorado <laughs> Representative Lauren Boebert was escorted out of a Beetlejuice performance for disrespectful conduct, including vaping, singing, and recording the show. Boebert explained that it was Beetlejuice's green hair that triggered her retaliation and the fear of the character having pronouns. You know, if you say Beetlejuice three times, RuPaul will appear and make you lip sync for your life. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice? I think you're just ah, wrong. Man. Are you lying to me? I was really hoping that would work. Oh. Well, we'll try it again later. The U.S. Coast Guard has arrested a man for trying to cross the Atlantic Ocean in an inflatable hamster wheel-like vessel. Apparently, this was his third arrest for illegal seafaring contraptions. But the Coast Guard had it under wraps this time with comically large pushpins. <laughs> Peter, I told you that hamster ball was a bad purchase. I know. I'm going to try it again with a slightly smaller one and see if I can get going faster that way. You might be able to like out, outrun them. Outrun them, out yeah. Outswim them? Run them? Uh, it's running, mostly, because it's like a wheel. Get your exercise. Yeah, like cycling around in it. I don't know. London's historic St. Paul's Cathedral hosted its first techno night, inspiring such events as the upcoming Hagia Sophia bar crawl and the Sistine Chapel rave. I would love to go to the Sistine Chapel rave. Just bump it. I think they got the full choir there. Oh, yeah. Being like, <laughs> they're all singing. <laughs> <laughs> well, and in, in conjunction, a street in Portugal was flooded with 500,000 gallons of wine after their tanks ruptured. The company at fault promised to pay back damages from the wine and the stray cats who had a crazy weekend. <laughs> Do you think the cats went to the rave? I think so. I mean, that, why bumping. wouldn't they? <laughs> In North Wales, citizens are being warned about burglaries, informing the public to look out for gnomes. Authorities suspect the gnomes are being used to signal the burglar's next mark. Studios have decided to adapt this into the next installment of the Gnomeo and Juliet cinematic universe, The Sopranomes. Look out for gnomes! Hey, Tony. Where's hey, your hat? Where's you your big hat, Tony? You got the gabagoo. You're not guarding the garden. I'm a gnome, gabagoo. 
Gabago. A genetically modified pig heart was successfully transplanted into a patient in need. The patient is being kept under observation due to bizarre side effects, including headache, fatigue, and frequent snorting. <laughs> Do you think if somebody got like a wolf heart transplant that they would be like knocking down their door? Yeah, or like trying to blow it down. Yeah, really. like, oh. <laughs> Earlier this week, 20-year-old singing sensation Olivia Rodrigo took to social media and announced both a new album and an upcoming tour, Guts. For many fans, the information was a lot to digest. Well, that joke was really sour. Yeah, well, hard, hard for made my tummy ache, the joke did. So. Tummy ache? Isn't that like a... Stomach ache, all right. Tummy, woo, I don't know, I don't know. Is that an Olivia Rodrigo song? <laughs> I thought that was like a Billie Eilish song. Oh, Is it could it? be. I could be wrong. I don't know. Somebody's nodding, yes. All right. I was right. Could be. So-so. <laughs> We've got a big show tonight. We'll be interviewing local cosplayer Nikki Styles, who'll be joining us for a special cosplay challenge. And later, the cast sits down to pitch a spinoff. You won't want to miss it, so stick around for Late Night at North Texas. Welcome back to Late Night at North Texas. Joining us now is Nikki Stiles. Hi, Nikki. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Awesome. I just wanted to start with like the easiest question to start with, right? Uh, you're a cosplayer, right? Um, yes, I've been cosplaying for a year and a half now. God, what got you into that? You think? Um, I've been dressed enough since I was a kid. My first costume was like Spider-Man to like Harley Quinn, but. When I like one decided to like start actually cosplaying, I was like, maybe it's not for me yet. I don't know, but you know, my first ever like cosplay was um, Inosuke from Demon Slayer. And it came out really well. I really like it. I got it from Amazon. I think most people will go for Amazon. I'm not that artistic yet. I hopefully, fingers crossed. Working on it. Yeah, I'm working on it. Well, are you, so you got that costume off of Amazon. So you, you're trying to get into making your own costumes? Yeah. Or, you know, thinking about it, maybe. Yeah, I'm, so far I'm doing, like, bits of it. Like, for example, like a jacket. I would add some things in it, like sew it in. Mm. I wish I could do it from, like, scratch, you know, getting the cow or something. <laughs> Just, yeah, but. Practice makes perfect. I know, right? <laughs> Um, and so what's the, what's your favorite cosplay that you've done so far then? You started with, in, I don't know, I don't know Demon Slayer, Inosuke? Yes, Inosuke. Inosuke okay. um, so far it's Tails, because um, I really like the jacket part. I wish I had a picture. Um, I did the lettering, and with, I think it's like puffy paint kind of material, mm -hmm. and did the lettering, and I just I really like it. And also it's like one of my favorite characters. Mm -hmm. So I think that's my favorite so far. Do you have any specific like m m memorable experiences or anything that's ha that's happened in your year and a half of cosplaying so far? Um, I attended um, DreamCon that was in Austin. Um, it was with my family and my friends, and I just like hanging out with them. I that was like my first actual con. I went mm. to um, Comic Con in Houston, but I didn't really have that much experience mm -hmm. because I only went there for one day. So it was like my first ever official one, and I just love hanging out with people, mm -hmm. you know, dressing up. Um, I attended a cosplay runway. I wish I won, but you know, at this experience, it just made me really happy. There were so many people that came up to me, like, oh my God, I love your cosplay, especially mm -hmm. my Tails one. It was like really out there. My sister also cosplay a bit. She mm -hmm. handmade a costume of Pyramid Head from scratch, and Ooh. it was like really great. I helped a bit because I had to start sewing mm. immediately. So yeah, it was really fun. I really loved that um, DreamCon experience. You said you went with your family. Were your like parents there also? Oh no. Oh okay. That would <laughs> no. be really. That would be really awkward, like, especially so. the after party stuff. That's <laughs> not it. Well, yeah, that's true. What is your favorite thing about like going to con? Like if you if you continue to go, like what was your favorite part about going to that? I know you went with your family and your friends, but was there something that you really want to take with you to the next one also? Um, just making connection with other cosplayers and hopefully do like a collab with other cosplayers and do like a whole group. Mm. That's my goal someday, I hope. So. What's your dream like group uh, cosplay? Oh, Sonic. Sonic? Just I, <laughs> it's either I to do like Tails again, like upgrade it or do Shadow. Those okay. are my two. Well, do you have any advice for people who are like looking to get into cosplaying or, or want to start going to cons or anything like that? Um, I would say start small with your cosplay. Like I said, like do Amazon. 
don't go too big unless you know how to really sell. Um, also, don't think too much into cosplay. Like I said, it's a fun hobby to do. It's not like a eight to five job. I've seen a lot that be really stressed out to try to be like the top cosplayers right now. And it's, it's gonna be really stressful. Like, like I said, just have fun, make memories, make connections. You're not gonna be famous right at the start. It, I was lucky that I had like 100, even 10,000 likes on my um, Miles Morales cosplay. Mm -hmm. But there's gonna be some times it'll be, you only get like 10 likes or 100 likes, which is grateful, I like it. So mm -hmm. I like I said, start small and also be happy and creative with cosplaying. Gotcha. And so for me, who's like getting ready for Halloween, and I don't get like a ton into Halloween personally, but I've been thinking about like doing like a Charlie Brown costume or something like that. Oh, that's so cute. What, what do you think the difference between like, you know, me wearing a costume and you as a cosplayer, like do you think there's a difference in that or is, are they like kind of the same? Um, I say it's kind of the same, but for cosplaying, you're actually being the character. For Halloween, you're just dressing up and you're gonna be like your, yourself, but like cosplaying, you actually are the character. Mm -hmm. Whether it's from exactly from the film or show or movie, or you're gonna put your own infants on your cosplay, like your own design on that character. Mm -hmm. So I think that it's, it's similar, but not exactly the same. Gotcha. So does Halloween, you think, mean anything specific to you as someone who's, you know, wears costumes year round at some point or anything like that? Is it, does it feel any different because it's more of a regular thing, I guess? Or is it just, a, you know, it's, uh, it's Halloween? Uh, since I'm a cosplayer, I think it's just similar. It was like a regular person to just dress enough for that one day and then they're gone and just being normal for the 364 days. So for me, it's like, I'm gonna cosplay and then, you know, next few days I'm gonna dress up and, you know, all that stuff. I think mm -hmm. it's gonna be a bit different than a regular person. Gotcha, okay. And I just a list of top five, like if you could if you could have like the perfect cosplay like tomorrow, uh, whether it's from Amazon or making yourself, what are your top five like characters like do you wanna like start thinking about being or anything like that? Or are you mostly focused on kind of perfecting tales first? Um, it's gonna be most likely Spider Punk. That's gonna be my cosplay for Anime Frontier. I don't, there's a lot of cos um, characters I want to cosplay, but mm -hmm. Spider Punk right now is my top one. I want to. That's my kind of like my dream cosplay. Gotcha. Right now. You can slay Spider Punk. I know. <laughs> I feel like I want to like hand make the like afro. Instead for like this one, I'm gonna like actually have a, like afro. Um, for like. For me, when I want to cosplay Spyropunk, I want to be actually Spyropunk, but people see me as like, oh, you look a female version. I'm like, no, I'm playing Spyropunk. Mm -hmm. I'm not a female version of Spyropunk. That's my opinion. And some people like say, oh, I'm a female version. I'm like, that's mm -hmm. fine. But to me, I am Spyropunk. So, okay. yeah. That's, that's cool. It. Well, uh, any upcoming events that you're going to be attending that we can see you at or that people might be able to, you know, get your social out or something, I'm not sure. Uh, you've got any events coming up? Is um, for right now, it's Anime Frontier that's in December. I am also want to do like a, a small event with me and my sister. She's going to be cosplaying as Scarecrow from um, the DC Universe. And probably I'm going to hopefully do Spyropunk on October um, as well for, for Halloween. I'm going to do like a small party or event. I don't know. That's up in the air for now. Cool. Well, that's all the questions I have for you. Thank, Thank you so much for being on the show. When we come back, Nikki will join us for a special game right here on Late Night at North Texas. Welcome back. We're here with Nikki Styles to play a game called the Late Night Cosplay Challenge. Nikki, thanks so much for joining us. You're welcome. All right, well, the rules are simple. Our cast has been backstage putting together their own cosplays inspired by your visit. We're going to have them come out, and we're going to ask them some questions to try and figure out which characters they're playing. And then we'll guess who they are, and whichever one of us guesses the most correctly wins. So without further ado, let's bring our, our talent out here to the characters that they are. We can applaud for them. Why not? <laughs> Oh, my. Oh. Oh. This is a challenging lot. I think I start, so I'm just going to ask uh, Stefan the first question. Um, Stefan, what is your biggest ambition? 
Well, you see, my biggest ambition is to rule the world. <laughs> okay. With robotics. Oh. Which world? No, I guess I can't ask a second follow-up question. Nikki, do you have something you want to ask? Okay. Me? Um. Who's your celebrity crush? Well, you see, me. I love myself. <laughs> He's the biggest celebrity he knows. I, do we think that we have like a good grasp on who he might be? I do. Well, we, we can come back to him. Do you want to move on and ask uh, Naomi what, what? OK, move on to our next character. Let's see, if you were president, which law would you pass? <laughs> Too political. Peter. Why do you, get to, do you want to add to that? Uh, uh. <laughs> okay. <sighs> what was your greatest achievement? Uh. Um, I, <laughs> I don't know. I think I, I, think I, I, think, I, think I know. I, have, I, I feel like I'm not right, but I have somewhere to start. Yeah. We want to ask Caden some questions now. Okay, um, I guess contestant number three. I don't know your name, I'm sorry. That's me. <laughs> What's your biggest phobia? Probably, I don't know, that guy that's always dressed to the nines, can't around Rose, don't like him. <laughs> okay, he's throwing me off. Let's see. Oh, yeah, I thought I knew, and now okay, I, I gotta ask I my question now, you know. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> let's see, if we went on a date, where would you take me? Somewhere high in the stars. <laughs> okay. What? Do we do we feel like we want to talk about? Do we want to ask him another round of questions? Maybe. I think I know the first. We got the, two. We got the first. Okay. Are the first you, two. Oh, the first two. Yeah. Let's talk about Stefan then. Okay. Uh, contestant I, number one. I think you're Doctor Eggman. Correct. The one and only. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Well, good. Uh, I think number two. I know it's like. The Star Wars franchise. Really? I was getting Link vibes with the. See that too. It's, it's the sword that's throwing me off. I know. Well, it's the rope that's throwing me off. I, 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 I think it's Star Wars. I don't know. I'm not a Star Wars fan. Yeah. But it's either Yoda or or Luke Skywalker. I don't know. One but the would they talk like? Yeah, I don't think. I don't <laughs> think Yoda would be giving us like. Oh, if anything, ah. it'd be like an Ewok or something. But that's where the sword. I, yeah. It's not. What do you think? <laughs> What's on your radar? Girl, I don't know. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty hardline Link right now, I think. See, that's what I think, but I only know Link from like Super Smash. Yeah. So. Where he says like, up high a lot. Yeah, that's true, that's true. Yeah, that's, like, that's sword, all that I'm basing the, the, sword, the sword and cloak, I think, sword could cloak. work. I just don't think the cloak is something Link could wear. Well, you wear like brown, kind of. -ish. Yeah, well, that's Yoda. I can't really ask, but I. Naomi, is the is the bow part of the cosplay, or are you just wearing that? <laughs> yeah, that's my thought. Because if, if the green bow is part of it, then that's like Yoda ears. But Yoda would be more like yeah. Uh, Yoda, and I don't, I'm not going to do an impression. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind. But Yoda could use words. What do we want to lock in? Do we want to lock in Link, or do we want to lock in Yoda? Yoda. It's, I don't think it's Yoda though. I'd be willing to say Yoda. Okay. I, I you want to say Yoda? Okay, same. Yoda, and our backup is Link. Yeah. Who do you? Who who are you? Link. <laughs> Very close. Very close. <laughs> Threw us off a little bit. And then lastly, I, uh, you seem to have a pretty good idea where this is going. No, I, I was thinking like oh. Popeye when he first walked out, I, but Popeye's more of like a yeah. more musky. Popeye's that, not a girly pop. I don't yeah, know anything about. Oh no. Sorry. Okay, can you like? Show us something real quick, just like. <laughs> besides that, besides yeah. is this like a Sailor Moon? Yeah, kind that's of thing? Sailor Moon, right? He I was gonna say Michael Jackson. <laughs> I don't. Sailor Moon. Oh, well, we didn't. Well, oh. She said it. Oh, okay. Oh my God, that I. Wow. Uh, what can I say? I'm too good. We're wow. right. All right. I'm in shock. We I got them I got all. That. Well, we sort of got them all. <laughs> Well, Nikki, thank you so much for joining us. And we'll be back with more Late Night at North Texas. It was crazy. Yeah. All right, great. Looks like everybody got my email. Yeah, so uh, why are we here? Listen, 
I just got an email shot down for me from the boss. They want a spinoff. They want it fast. And what's the spinoff going to be about? Well, that's the other reason I called everybody here. See. The producers are out at the uh, National University Television Convention. So. Oh man, I love the Nutcon stories. Yeah. Okay, Lorraine in a little bit here. We gotta think of something. Who's got ideas? Well, no one else is gonna go. I have an idea. A sitcom? He's Caden. He's just Caden. His friends are there too. Caden around? Yeah, you know, like I'm just Caden around. We'll put a pin in it. Yeah, you know what? I have a better idea. Just, wow, he thinks that what? Just because he sits at the big desk now, he can do whatever he wants? That is not gonna fly with me, nuh uh. A reality TV show? <laughs> yeah, like 90 Day Fiance or Real Housewives. Something that gives the viewers a look into the juicy drama behind the scenes. Well, I don't think we want to present the idea that there's a lot of drama behind the scenes of the show. That might be bad for optics. I concur. Who does Stefan think he is? I mean, being agreeable to someone? Not on my watch. You good? Yep, all good. Okay, well what do you got, Stefan? Alright, now with all the bad ideas out of the way, I have the perfect idea for a spin-off show. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna be able to do that one, Stefan. It might not fit our budget. Seriously? Yeah, we got like 639 left. All right, I gotta make a few calls. Guess it's my turn now. How about the attack of the bloody murder sharks from Mars? Is that the screenplay you showed me last week? Didn't you write that in like the seventh grade? Yep. And after years of fine-tuning, I think it's ready for its straight-to-TV movie cut into an episodic format screen. I'm not sure that we can do that one. When I read it, it was like really dark and super gory. Yeah, it's not exactly arable. I think we need to get something more TV-14. <sighs> Stupid studio meddling. I'll never compromise my art for you hacks! <sighs> hey, where'd Peter go? I think I had to step out for a second. Hmm. Yeah, bad news everybody. Got some bad news here. Uh, listen, we're not getting a spinoff. For real? Why not? Uh, turns out that email uh, is meant for you and talk. Um, so... Now what? Well, we've made it to the end of another episode far too quickly. Largely in thanks to our amazing guest star, let's hear it one more time for Nikki Styles. And let's get a, give it up for our wonderful talent performances tonight. And finally, a big thanks to our viewers, whether online or in the audience. As long as we can be with you, it's a lovely night. I'm Peter Rabel. And I'm Caden Spalzon. And this has been Late Night at North Texas. Good, Good night. night.